Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do crosshatching illustrations in Procreate. I'm also going to provide you with a couple of exercises for you to practice crosshatching. So let's jump right into it. For this I'm going to be using the crosshatching experience brush set for Procreate. You can find it on my Gumroad page along with a free mini version for you to try out. I have included the two images for the exercises we are going to do in this video in both paid and free versions of this set so everyone can download them. The links are in the description below. Alright, the first thing I want to do is give you a little tour on some of the 54 brushes that are included in this set and explain how they work. You can see what brush I'm using at any moment by looking at this rectangle here. First, we are going to find three different inking brushes. Having a good liner drawing is essential before even touching the crosshatching brushes, so these three brushes will help you with that. They have a nice inky feel to them and pressure sensitivity for line weight control. The next few brushes are the ones that I call precision crosshatching brushes. They allow you to control in which direction the little hatching lines go. You can see how I'm using them here and notice how I will do the strokes first in one direction, then more strokes in perpendicular to the previous ones, and I can keep adding more strokes in different directions to increase the density of the crosshatching work. You can also appreciate how many different styles of crosshatching you can get by simply changing the brush you're using. I like to use these brushes for the parts of my drawing that require more precision, like the face of a character, clothing folds, and things like that. The next four brushes are like a more freestyle scribbly hatching in different thicknesses from light to heavy. Now you're going to see me swatch here a lot of brushes that work similarly between them. These are the ones that I call general crosshatching brushes, because they allow you to cover bigger areas in no time while maintaining a nice handmade crosshatching texture. With these brushes you can rotate the canvas to change the direction of the lines. This way you can also increase the density of the crosshatching work. I'm not going to swatch all the brushes here, because there are a lot, but you get the idea. A special mention to this couple of brushes called Controllable, because they are amazing for having the lines follow the angle in the direction you are doing your strokes. Then a few more general crosshatching brushes, and some other miscellaneous hatching brushes to achieve different effects. I recommend that you test out all the brushes by yourself to get to know all the possibilities this set has to offer. And these last brushes are the more recent additions with my last update. I love this because the crosshatching texture is going to get thicker and denser the more pressure you apply with the Apple Pencil, making it easy and fun to control and get a lot of personality in the line work. Now for the first exercise, I'm going to draw a little scene with a few geometric objects sitting on a surface. Remember that you can download this line art image by getting the paid or the free versions of the crosshatching experience brush set from my Gumroad page, link in the description. The first thing you want to do is set the image layer to multiply mode, so that whatever you draw below this layer is still visible. Then we are going to mask each one of the geometric objects by filling the shape with a color on a separate layer for each object. You can achieve this in different ways. Right now I'm just setting the drawing layer as reference and color filling each shape in a separate layer using color drop. I'm doing this using different colors so that you can see what I'm doing, but the idea is to have the masks filled with white. Now that we have that, we are going to create a new layer on top of each shape and set these layers as clipping masks. I'm going to quickly draw a three-dimensional arrow to point the direction in which the light of the scene is going to come from. And here you can see how I can only draw inside the sphere, because I'm painting in the clipping mask layer I've set a moment ago. Now I'm going to use the Wheeler 3 brush to start shading the sphere with hatching lines. Notice how my strokes are following the rounded shape of the sphere, and I'm also having in mind the direction of the light source I established with that arrow. 
I'm slowly building up the density of the cross hatching by changing the direction of my strokes to make the darker parts of the sphere. This is basically like painting a gradient from light to dark, but instead of using color, we are using a lot of little lines. Here's a nice trick with these brushes. You can use them with the eraser tool as well. This way you can draw negative lines that will help you make the transitions smoother, like I'm doing here in the areas where the light is touching. Also notice how I'm leaving a light area in the bottom left side of the sphere. I'm doing this because light always bounces against the surfaces and it reaches again the objects from the bottom. I'm shading now the cone in the middle and I'm following exactly the same method I used for the sphere. I'm drawing my strokes carefully following the shape and three-dimensional form of the object and then increasing the density of the cross hatching as the object is turning away from the light. For the cube, we are going to use the general cross hatching brushes instead of the precision ones. That's because the surfaces of the cube are flat, so we are always going to try finding the right brushes for each job. The general cross hatching brushes in this set work really great for shading large and flat surfaces. Notice how I'm using the selection tool for shading one of the sides of the cube and then I'm rotating the canvas to add more density in some areas. I'm following the same principle as for the sphere and making the bottom part of this side of the cube lighter than the top part because of the light reaching the surface where the objects are sitting and it bounces to slightly touch the objects again from the bottom. Then I'll shade the other sides of the cube where the light is hitting with more intensity because they are facing the light source. I'm actually leaving the top side of the cube without any shading at all because the light is hitting it directly and it is a flat surface. Now let's think of the shadows the objects themselves are going to project on the environment using the direction of the arrow as reference. And using one of the general cross hatching brushes, we are going to add the hatching texture on the floor and on the wall using the selection tool to limit the shadow areas and with the canvas rotation method we are going to make the shadows darker in the parts where the light is less likely to reach meaning the parts where the shadows get closer to the objects that are projecting them Next, using the pressure hatching one brush, I'm going to add some hatching texture in the wall by quickly masking the area with the selection tool and applying the texture with the brush and increasing the density in the bottom area. And I'm going to add some horizontal lines using the pressure hatching tool to the bottom surface, making sure to not press too hard so that the lines stay relatively thin. The last thing missing is the shadow that the cube would project over the cone, so I'm using the fine hatching brush to quickly add the missing shadow where the cone is closest to the cube and almost touching it. By the end of this exercise, you should have something like this. Feel free to use the line drawing provided to practice different directions of light and get to know the brushes. You don't need to use the exact same brushes I used. You can experiment with the other brushes included in the set and see what different styles of cross hatching you can achieve with them. For the next exercise, it is going to be more of a full illustration I'm going to draw so that you can see in practice how to use what we've learned and then you can try to do it by yourself with the exact same line art drawing that I will provide you. So here you can see how I take my time on doing a proper sketch before inking. By the way, I'm using this photo I took myself of a 3D printed skull for reference and this awesome other photo by Muhammad Abdullah as reference for the clothing. So as you can see, when I do my sketch, I don't really work on every detail of my drawing. I mostly make sure to place everything in the right spot. I check that my proportions are correct, and even if this is a pretty static pose, I still try to give it some life by carefully thinking on the way this character is holding that sore on the shoulder. Then, in the inking part is where I'm going to finalize defining all the details. I'm only worrying about pure lines at this stage. I'm not feeling anything in black or adding any type of shading at all. We are going to leave that for the crosshatching part. You can also see me struggling with defining the fire in this character's head. Drawing fire is hard, okay? Anyway, another reminder that you can download this drawing from my Gumroad page by getting the paid or the free versions of the Crosshatching Experience brush set. Link in description.
now for the crosshatching part. The first thing we want to do is setting the drawing layer to multiply and masking the whole figure the same way we did with the geometric objects in the previous exercise. I'm using the selection tool this time because the shape is too complex for the automatic selection or color drop features to handle properly. I'm also using a red color here but only so that you can see it. Then I'm going to fill it with white and create a new layer on top of this one and set it to clipping mask. Now that our figure is fully masked, I can start by creating a crosshatching gradient in the background under the character by using a general crosshatching brush and rotating the canvas to gradually increase the density of the crosshatching texture. I'm trying to make the head of the character the focus here, because the fire from his head is going to be the main light source. I'm also using the eraser tool with the crosshatching brushes to make the transitions of the crosshatching gradient softer in the edges. When the background is done, I can start working on the character. I will start with the skull. Using one of the precision brushes, I'm going to start defining the volumes in the face. Notice how my strokes are following the direction of the different volumes and planes in the skull. And I'm also changing the direction of my strokes where I want to increase the density of the hatching to darken those areas. I'm not going to lie, sometimes I'll go with my instincts and add crosshatching lines where I feel it is going to help defining the volumes. Think that with crosshatching we are not only defining the volumes, lights and shadows, but we can also use it to simply add texture. That's why it looks good when we place some hatching in areas where it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a shadow there or something. I'm also defining the darkest darks in the cavities of the skull, but instead of using pure black, I'm filling the area with a very dense crosshatching brush, so that it still has some hatching texture to it. Then I'm using a general brush to darken and add some texture to some areas of the fire, so that it looks that some parts of the fire are hotter than others. For the clothing, I'm first working on shading the fold areas where the light is less likely to reach. I'm also using the fine hatching brush to define the general volume of the body shape, the arm and the hand. You can see how I'm switching between different brushes to add variety in the crosshatching textures. This will make it look more like it was all done by hand. I'm also using the selection tool when I need to isolate some areas before adding the crosshatching, like in these two stripes in the cloak. I want to share one last trick I like to do to my inking drawings to make them look more traditional. I'm going to import a couple of textures from my paper collection, also available on my Gumroad page. First, I'm adding a texture called black pepper and paper, I'll place it on top of everything else and I'll set it to multiply. Then, on a layer below, I'm importing the texture called noir paper 2 and I will set this layer to lighter color mode. Then, using the Corpse tool in the whole layer, I'm going to add a point in the middle of the graphic and crank it up to increase the intensity and visibility of the texture in the ink areas. And this is the final crosshatching illustration. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, subscribe for more videos and give me a thumbs up. Also, if you try to do these exercises by yourself and decide to post them on social media, feel free to tag me so that I can see your work and share it with my audience. Make sure to check out my Gumroad page, where you will find the crosshatching experience brush set for Procreate and many other sets and freebies that I have available. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time.